Before a hacker ever launches an exploit, cracks a password, or drops a payload, they ask one simple question. What doors are open? Because ports are not just numbers, they are conversations waiting to happen. And every open port tells a hacker exactly how a system communicates, what services it trusts, and where it might fail. For defenders, ports are configuration details. For hackers, they are attack paths, shortcuts into systems that were designed to be accessible. This is why port knowledge is one of the first real skills hackers master, because once you understand which ports matter and why, you stop scanning blindly and start thinking strategically. Hackers usually prioritize high-risk, high-reward ports first, the ones that expose remote access, authentication, or legacy services. At the top of that list sits FTP on port 21, a service still widely used but often misconfigured, leaking credentials in plain text and allowing anonymous access, brute force attacks or malicious file uploads that lead directly to web shells. Right beside it is Telnet on port 23, one of the most dangerous ports still found alive because it sends everything, usernames, passwords, commands, completely unencrypted, making it a favorite target for sniffing attacks, credential harvesting, and botnet infections. Then comes SMB on ports 445 and 139, a goldmine for attackers, heavily abused for lateral movement, credential dumping, ransomware propagation, and infamous exploits like Eternal Blue that allowed full system compromise without value valid credentials. RDP on port 3389 is another crown jewel for hackers. Frequently attacked through brute force, credential stuffing, and misconfigured access rules because once RDP falls, the attacker doesn't just access a service, they access the entire desktop environment. SSH on port 22, while secure by design, becomes dangerous when weak passwords, reused keys, or exposed root access exist, making it a prime target for brute force, key abuse, and persistence installation. Once remote access paths are mapped, hackers move into web and application-facing ports because the internet lives here. HTTP on port 80 and HTTP PS on port 443 are among the most scanned ports on Earth, not because the protocol itself is broken, but because web applications sitting behind them often are vulnerable to SQL injection, XSS, file inclusion, authentication bypass, and logic flaws that allow attackers to jump from browser access to server-level compromise. SQL services like MySQL on 3306 and MSSQL on 1433 are especially attractive when exposed, enabling brute force login attacks attempts, database dumping, privilege escalation, and sometimes direct command execution on the host. These ports often leak internal data that attackers use to move deeper into the network. Email infrastructure opens another attack surface hackers love to abuse. SMTP on port 25, POP3 on 110, and IMAP on 143 are frequently targeted for credential harvesting, phishing campaigns, and mail relay abuse, allowing attackers to send malicious emails from legitimate servers or steal inboxes full of sensitive data. Compromising email ports doesn't just give access, it gives trust, which hackers weaponize to spread malware internally. DNS on port 53, while essential, is also abused for DNS tunneling, data exfiltration, and command and control communication, letting attackers hide malicious traffic inside what looks like normal name resolution. DHCP on port 67 or 68 can be exploited in rogue DHCP attacks, where attackers assign fake network configurations to redirect victims to malicious gateways especially in Wi-Fi environments. Time and synchronization services are often ignored, which is exactly why hackers like them. NTP on port 123 has been abused for massive amplification-based DOS attack turning small requests into traffic floods that can cripple networks, while also being manipulated to disrupt authentication systems that rely on accurate time. Then come moderate risk but highly situational ports, often overlooked by admins, but valuable during deeper attacks. SNMP on port 161, when misconfigured, leaks device information, credentials, routing data, and network topology, basically handing hackers a blueprint of the infrastructure. LDAP on port 389, commonly tied to Active Directory, becomes extremely dangerous if exposed or weakly authenticated, enabling directory enumeration, user harvesting, and privilege escalation chains. TFTP on port 69, used for lightweight file transfers, is frequently abused to pull or push configuration files, firmware, or malware with no authentication at all. 
Finally, there are lower risk but still exploitable ports that hackers don't ignore. They just save them for later. NetBIOS on 137, 139, RPC on 135, and VNC on 5900 can leak system details, allow remote screen access, or support lateral movement when combined with stolen credentials. Even Wi-Fi attacks like Man in the Middle rely heavily on ports. As attackers intercept HTTP traffic on port 80, downgrade HTTPS connections, manipulate DNS on port 53, or exploit DHCP to silently reroute traffic through malicious access points, turning open networks into surveillance tools. In the end, hackers don't see ports as numbers. They see opportunities ranked by risk, visibility, and impact. High-risk ports give control, medium-risk ports give expansion, and low-risk ports give stealth. This is why understanding ports is not optional in hacking or defense. Because if you know which ports hackers love and why, you can predict their next move before they even make it. And once you start thinking this way, Scanning stops being noise, and every open port becomes a story waiting to be exploited. If this video helped sharpen your understanding of open port hacking, make sure to like, share, and subscribe for more real-world cybersecurity content. Drop a comment below with the port that surprised you the most, and I'll see you in the next one.